Korea's cafe culture is absolutely insane. There's so many different types of cafes. So today I'm going to show you all of the cafes I visited during my trip to Korea and whether or not they're worth the visit. The first is Cafe Muni. This was definitely one of the more popular cafes we stopped by in Korea. The cafe itself is super aesthetic. Every corner is super picturesque with so many photo ops. And because it spans three floors, there's plenty of seating so it's perfect for bigger groups. Food-wise, they have a wide selection of cronuts. The custard one is to die for. If you like custard, definitely give this a try. There's also other pastries, but I think Kona is their signature. Drinks are pretty standard. I got the vanilla latte, and you honestly can't go wrong with coffee in Korea, but this was honestly one of the best vanilla lattes I've had. It was perfectly balanced and not too sweet. Next up, we have Core. We honestly stopped by this on a whim since we had some extra time to kill. I believe they're also a golf accessories and clothing brand. So the cafe is golf themed with a brick and mortar store downstairs. The signature here is definitely their ice cream buns. They have a lot of different flavors and we opted for a vanilla one. If you have a sweet tooth, this is definitely for you, but it was honestly too much sugar for us, especially since we also decided to try some of their signature drinks like their signature cream latte and black sesame latte. The cream latte was just way over the top. It was too sweet but the black sesame one was pretty good so get this if you stop by if there's a cafe i stop by every morning it'll definitely be perception it's pretty small but they have one of the coolest interior designs of all the cafes it's aesthetic but it's also very comfortable to just sit and get the morning started with a cup of latte they offer a few pastry and dessert items alongside their drink menu we got a matcha latte and an ice spina and it's actually my first time trying ice spiners and they're so good the cream complements it so well the matcha latte was honestly too sweet for my liking, but they definitely used a high quality matcha, so if you get this, try to adjust the sugar level. And although we stopped by in the morning, we had to try their tiramisu because we love tiramisus. Not going to lie, it was too much cream for breakfast, but it'll be the perfect little midday pick-me-up. Speaking of tiramisus, if you love tiramisus like I do, make sure to stop by Mangwangdong Tiramisu in Mangwang. They have a wide selection of tiramisus ranging from the original flavor to strawberry and matcha. The strawberry one tasted just like a strawberry cheesecake and i imagine the other fruity variation will probably taste the same i also absolutely love the interior so if you have time definitely sit and relax but i say this is more of a to-go place since they only sell tiramisu definitely skip their drinks because it was just not good we tried their limited time refresher aid and it was just way too sweet so definitely save your stomach space another one of my favorite desserts is definitely dangos and if you also love dangos you have to visit dango jib as their name suggests they specialize in dangos the cafe itself is super inviting it felt like i entered a friend's home their dangos are pretty good obviously not as good as japan but it's worth a try if you're craving dangos or just obsessed with anything mochi dango like like me the red bean latte was also perfect it really reminded me of the old school Hong Kong Taiwan style red bean slushies. The yuja tea was unfortunately too sweet and if you haven't caught on already, and eating food in Korea is just absurdly sweet so definitely try to adjust the sugar level or just skip it altogether. And obviously it's not cafe hopping in Korea without a stop at a Hana cafe. We visited Sini Donga which is super close to Hongdae. In terms of aesthetic, this cafe was definitely worth the hype. Once you're inside, it doesn't even feel like you're in the middle of one of Seoul's busiest areas. It's quite relaxing to just sit and catch up with some friends. Since we visited later in the day, majority of the food items were already sold out but we did try some of their drinks. The corn cream latte was pretty good and one of the better lattes we have this trip. The Rurunji latte just honestly tastes like a caramel latte from Starbucks so nothing too special but definitely stop by to get your picture fix. The next two cafes are a great pit stop for a quick drink in the middle of the day. The first being Cafe Tatum. This little gem in Yonamdong is so cute. Not only is it close to all of the other cafes and shopping in the area, they have the cutest mascot. You place your order on the first floor which is also a gift shop so you can get some super cute souvenirs to take home. Their most popular drink would definitely be this very cute milk tea. They also have a coffee version, but we chose the milk tea because you can see the bear a little bit more clearly. But nonetheless, the milk tea was pretty refreshing and I personally would get it again if I'm in the area. If milk tea and coffee isn't your thing, definitely check out matcha in Myeongbong. The matcha is probably the best in Seoul. You can see them milling the matcha in the back so you know it's fresh. And if you don't like matcha, you have to at least try their hojicha because it's just as good. We ended up buying a jar of this to bring back because good and fresh hojicha is really hard to come by. And now that we cover some quick pick-me-up spot, it's time for some real food. 
This next one isn't just a cafe, it's technically a brunch spot with a cafe on premise, which means you can get both a coffee and pastry to go, or brunch with the gals at 413 Project. I have to say, this is one of the best brunch I've had outside of NYC. The food was super tasty, and the drinks were wonderful as well. The lychee and berry smoothie was probably the only fruity drink we liked this trip. The Nova pancake platter and the shrimp and garlic shashuka was amazing. Definitely recommend checking out if you're in Seoul. Another brunch or a cafe spot that I absolutely love is Grandpa Factory. Not only do they have a real tree house that you can sit in, but their food was wonderful. It's quite hard to find pizza that's not sweet in Korea, so it's really refreshing to finally find one. This pasta was incredible. If you like an extra spicy cake in your pasta, you'll love this. Oh, and don't sleep on the free pickles. This was so addicting. Grandpa's Factory is hands down one of my favorites on this list. And nearby Grandpa Factory is another cafe I recommend checking out. It's called Chongsegaok, and it reminds me of a rooftop greenhouse. It's filled with plants and unique pastries like this yakwa croissant, which was delicious. Make sure to give it a try, especially if you love yakwa. As for drinks, I made the mistake of ordering milk tea, but their coffee was great, so make sure to order a latte or any espresso-based drink if you come. Now we can't talk about cafes without some good bread. Freshly baked bread in Korea are the absolute best, and the salt bread from Soha Salt Bread is definitely a must try. We stopped by pretty early in the morning, so luckily there wasn't a line. We had to get their original salt bread because I kid you not, a woman came in and brought a whole bag to go, and I totally understand why. It's the perfect amount of savoriness to complement a nice cup of coffee, and the bread was perfectly fluffy. We also tried the cream one, but I say stick with the original if you can. Their lattes were good, but it wasn't anything too mind-blowing. So in my opinion, I would skip it since there's just so many good cafes in the area. And while you're at it, make sure to also visit Miltos, which is only a couple minutes away. This is my favorite place ever. I know I said this a lot throughout the video, but this is my favorite place ever. I am obsessed with it. I love this place so much. Not only is the cafe super cozy, but their bread, my god, it was amazing. They're steamed to perfection. It's one of those bread that's super fluffy, but also have enough of a bite, giving you a chewy, mochi-like texture. There's a couple of flavors to choose from. The sweet potato one is perfect for fall. PSA, if you do visit, make sure to try to get a seat at the counter to see the bread prepared right in front of you. All right, now moving on to some of Seoul's most iconic cafes, the first being Cheongsudang, which is known for their fluffy souffle pancakes. Pancakes. They're baked in a deep dish, which keeps the pancakes super moist and gooey in the center. Personally, I'm not really a fan of that gooey texture, but the cafe itself is beautiful. You definitely have to see it in person, but I probably wouldn't go back for their food. Another popular cafe that's all over social media is definitely One in One Sang. Now, this is quite far from everything else, so only go if you have time. It's located right next to the Impyeong Hanok village, which is beautiful and is literally the reason why this cafe is so special. It has the perfect view of the Hanok village so you know you'll get some amazing pictures here. I say the food and drink isn't too shabby but their customer service definitely needs work. Maybe because we were foreigners but they weren't too friendly to us and the other foreigners in the cafe so just beware. If you don't want to dine in the cafe you can also just go up to the rooftop which also has the perfect view of the Hanok village. While walking through the village we also noticed that there was also quite a bit of cafes so definitely pay them a visit instead if you're looking for a quick bike and drink. While we're on the topic of cafes to be aware of, this next one was definitely a huge disappointment and that would be Nakwon. They're known for their rebel theme and not gonna lie, it's so picture perfect here. They definitely got the theme to the T. But I have to say the food and drinks were the worst we've had this trip. Everything was just way too sweet and subpar compared to everything else on this list. So please avoid if you can. Instead of grabbing a drink or a pastry at Nakwon, I say stop by Seoul Coffee which is right next door. We tried their ang butter bread and despite how it looks, it's surprisingly good. Definitely do so your artery your favorite and remove some of the butter. But the bread itself was super fluffy and the wrapping was perfectly sweetened. Aside from ang butter bread, they also have gelato and of course coffee. If you can, I recommend sitting in this cute little cubicle. I really felt like I was being transported back into my own little cozy hideout. Speaking of little hideouts, I have to introduce one of my favorite Pak Bing Su spots in Seoul. It's located in Shincheon and it's been here for years. Home Bot is well known for their Pak Bing Su. Not only is their decor super cute, their original red bean Pak Bing Su really reminds me of the old school Hong Kong style red bean ice. If you know, you know. But I do have to say the strawberry Bing Su is my favorite. 
it's seasonal so make sure to try it if you have the chance to. Amidst all of the different cafes in Korea, there's obviously some mainstream ones like Starbucks. And I know Starbucks don't need highlighting on anyone's list, but the Seoul Wave location, Hangam Park, is definitely worth a visit because it's right on a boat so you can get some amazing views of the Hangam River. You can also get some Korea exclusive drinks there. So even if you don't need a drink, definitely check this location out. And of course, it's not a visit to Seoul without visiting the famous Cafe Onion. They have two locations, a Hanok one and a rustic construction themed one in Songsu. We went to the Songsu one since the Hanok one is usually packed, but boy was I wrong. There were just way too many people even at the Songsu location, so we didn't get to try any of their pastries or drinks. But I have to say this location was really big. There was even a brand event there when we went, so it's definitely a cool spot to hang out and catch up with some friends on the weekends. We unfortunately didn't have time to wait in line, so we have to save this for next time. Another popular cafe is definitely Nudake by Jen monster. The Jenny effect is definitely real because this cafe was packed as well. But we were still able to go in to see all of the cool pastries they have to offer. I heard they opened a new location specifically for croissants. If any of you have been, please let me know if it's worth the hype. And last but not least on this list is Cafe Layered. They have multiple locations throughout Seoul and while we did stop by a few of them, we never really got the chance to sit down to get the full experience. But I did manage to try one of their famous scones from the Hyundai Mall location and I say if you like scones, definitely give it a try. Their cafes are beautiful and the scone I had was pretty scrumptious despite being in a food court. So I definitely want to go back to one of their locations to really get the full experience. There's a lot more cafes I wish I got to stop by, but unfortunately, I only had time to check out these 22. Please let me know if you end up visiting any of these and comment below if there's any other cafes I should try on my next trip. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.